Happy International Star Wars Day, everyone. May the fourth be with you. But let's instead turn our sketching skills over to the dark side. Hi, everyone. It's Star Wars Day. Um, so May the 4th, as in May the 4th be with you, is... Uh, I think believe it's officially International Star Wars Day, and for us as sketchers, that means some gratuitous fan art, some uh, Star Wars sketching. So um, I put out a post the other day saying, "What do you want me to sketch?" And um, I'm going to do at least one video today, and this is that at least one video, and there may be more to follow. We'll see how much time I get, but. Um, here you go, here is the Millennium Falcon. Um, it's a, a really fun thing. It was actually a real challenge for me because it's very different. Uh, it involves a lot of different shapes, a lot of different just techniques. But at the same time, we can still use the same ideas, same sort of three steps uh, to go through, do our shapes, do those loose colours, and then just bring it together with a little bit of restructuring at the end. So here we go. In three steps, a loose uh, sketch of the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. Have fun. Now, obviously for copyright reasons, Millennium Falcon image I'm using can't be in my video. So what I suggest, you just Google Millennium Falcon and you'll find loads of great different photos and different models and all sorts of things that you can use and do your own version of the sketch. I will put the link to the sketch, the, the, the reference I'm using in the description below. Um, and join in, have fun, do some of your own um, Star Wars inspired sketches today because that's what this silly little sort of sketching event is all about. Um, we're going to be using a fountain pen, um, my normal set of watercolours, uh, some carbon ink, uh, which is black waterproof ink, and I've got an A5 or half letter size moleskin sketchbook. So that's all the supplies we'll need. I've got a couple of brushes as well. So I've got a big mop brush and a little size six round brush. So with that, we're just going to start. We're going to start with shapes. So first, what I'm going to do is get you know, this. This is a big circle, but it's in a really weird perspective, which is going to make it really awkward to work out the shortening, awkward to work out um, what's going on, really, without a few guides in there. So the guides are going to be those easier to work out shapes. So, for example, we've got this basically rectangle in the middle. And it's a rectangle with a little bit of perspective on it. Uh, but it's still basically a rectangle. We can, having done that, we can add just a few little details on to suggest those kind of computery, textury marks it's got on it. And we can immediately just make it into a 3D shape as well, just to make life a bit easier as we work through other stages of our sketch. Now behind this kind of rectangle, we've got basically a circle. It's a circle, but it's in perspective. So we need to just be careful to sort of flatten it, turn it more into an ellipse, less of a circle. And again, we can add in some of these details. We've got this little turret. So let's just add in the turret, just as a really basic set of shapes. Sorry, just chucking my pen around there. Um, what else have we got? We've got this kind of satellite looking dish, haven't we? So we can bring that in. And what we're doing now, we're building up the shapes as reference points. So now we can work out where the next shape is based on where the previous shapes are. So rather than just having to do the whole thing at once, we can start piecing it together with reference points. So for example, we've got this other shape going. It's another, basically another rectangle. And we can see how it relates to the satellite dish, the kind of satellite shape. And by relating it, we can suddenly just add it in in approximately the right place. And this all takes a bit of time. It just gradually, these things sort of come together, but it's all slow and gradual. And we're not going to get things the right size. So I can see that I've got the, the satellite dish is, is, for example, definitely too big now that, I, now that I see it. But it's fine. It doesn't matter. It's a sketch. It's supposed to be firm and loose. We're going to do, going off this way, we've got another sort of rectangle. Again, because of the perspective, it feels shorter. It's the same size as this one, but it feels shorter. So we can just add that in and make sure it feels shorter. And then this comes in here. This kind of uh, out, outhouse, let's call it an outhouse, then a Star Wars outhouse. Um, go on, someone can tell me in the comments what, what this really is. Um, just correct my ignorance, my Star Wars ignorance. 
Then we can bring in these, what are essentially, for all intents and purposes, triangles with their noses cut off. It's got one there. Underneath we can just bring in this kind of other shape. Then here we've got another basically triangle, which comes all the way out here. And do you see how it's starting to come together, right? It's starting to make sense. Whereas before, perhaps, you thought, oh, he's just drawing ridiculous shapes. But now we're starting to get the feel of, of the ship as we know it. At the back, this is very much foreshortened. So this half of the circle is huge. This half of the circle is very much not huge. It's, it feels very much too narrow. But as we build in the kind of idea of the perspective with the, the radial lines going out, some of these circles which are on top, the kind of textures, which gets flatter and flatter as they go out, it actually starts to make sense. It starts to make sense that this is in perspective, which is why we're losing that, that length at the back. And it's all just by analysing the shapes, by looking quickly for the right kind of shapes to add in, rather than anything really challenging or clever. And we can build this out. And then we can do these other circles. So now we just, we kind of got the structure, haven't we? We've got the the basic outline and now it's all about just getting the shapes and perhaps in places where I, I recognize I've I've got the wrong sizes initially so this was wasn't out far enough well we can just correct that we can just add in some extra lines and make it the right size now make it bigger than I initially sketched it and that again is the advantage of a taking a really loose and gentle approach with our sketching there's lots of kind of radial lines in here and lines covering the circumference. We can just, again, without having to really pick out the details, we can suggest them. We can suggest these dark panels. And all of these radial lines, they show the perspective because as they get narrower and narrower back here, our eye immediately recognises, ah, back here is, is flattened because of the perspective because it's further away. We don't have to be clever about it. We just... Uh, find the tricks which help us display the perspective. And we come in here, a couple of extra bits of 3D line again. And what else are we missing? Well, we're missing some of the, the sort of shadows, aren't we? So what we can do is we can start finding some of the darkest areas. We've already done a few of them, but we can find some of these darkest areas, like the windows. And we can come and hatch in some very simple shadows as well and down here a bit of shadow in this satellite dish for sure there's shadow and actually it's very dark in places so we just maybe cross hatch instead of just simple hatching we'll do some cross hatching down here there's shadow so all of this is still just this, this idea of shape because we're finding the 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 simple outlines simple shapes and now we're we're finding the shapes which are darker and we're just making them, literally just making them darker. Anything else, a little bit here, a little bit of hatching. And I think, to be fair, that's probably enough done with our shapes. He says, there's always something else, isn't there? There's always something else. So just going to do a little bit of hatching in here as well. So there you go. That's a really sort of complex, challenging kind of set of shapes. But just by really approaching it loosely, we've been able to manipulate and move and make changes and come up with something which at least resembles a Millennium Falcon with a, a lovely little sketch. So step two is where we start to have a bit of fun with our colour and adding some loose colours. Now, you know, the Millennium Falcon is obviously it's grey, isn't it? So why don't we actually treat it to start with as negative space? So to do that, I'm going to start just with some water going around the outside because well it's in space isn't it um normally it's in you know with a dark backdrop of of uh, stars and things like that so we'll get some water around the outside and then let's just start with a an, a fun color let's let's pop some moon glow in we don't have to get that dark feeling straight away nor do we actually have to get it really dark we don't have to make the the darkness as it were we don't have to make it really totally black it could just be um you know a suggestion uh, a hint of of the depth of what's going on behind and what i want is to get loads of 
interesting textures in there. So that's why we've gone wet on wet. The wet first, wet water first, followed by, obviously, uh, wet watercolours. And we could just build up that kind of texture and that feeling. Uh, what else goes on in a in a sky like this? Or what not sky is it? It's in, in a sort of space, in a spacescape. Well, a bit more darkness perhaps with some indigo. So I'm just dropping in some indigo to uh, bring a bit more depth in. We can just have a play with quite a few different colours here really. Just let things blend and merge and create texture. So let's pop some violet in, perlin violet. And just sort of arranging that around what's going on already, arranging it around these dark areas of indigo, for example. Um, what else? Well, why not a little punch of blue? And I love how when you drop cobalt blue in, I love how it sort of spreads out and creates, it feels like a highlight, even though it's it's not really, it's it's, it's a cool blue. But it, it within this, you see how it spreads and, and blends. I encourage you just to, to play with concepts like this. Even if you don't necessarily like um, the look of it, actually it teaches you a lot about how your colours respond, which is important in whatever sort of style of watercolour painting you enjoy most. You, you really do benefit from understanding how your colours work, how they interact with each other and with water. So I'm just continuing really to drop in these colours and move them, blend them, let them do their thing a little bit. And then when they've done their thing for a bit, I can come and sort of do my thing and, and, and try and impart a little bit of my own feeling and structure onto it. What I regret doing, or not doing, is not having a clip on. So I'm just going to correct that now, because now I'll be able to leave that page and it's going to stay nice and, st nice and still while it dries. Now another thing I think I'm going to add in, I didn't mention in the supplies, but what I'm going to add in is some touches of white. And to do that, I'm just going to get an acrylic marker. So you're, so you're probably aware of these Posca pens. These are acrylic markers. They come in all different colours. Um, for me, for this style, the, the most useful colour, of course, is white. And what we find is if we drop it in, it kind of, even though it's acrylic, acrylic is water-soluble, so it will still act uh, sort of like a watercolour. It's just opaque. So we can come in and we can drop, drop it around and look at it spread into the water. Look how it creates a different kind of texture. And all of that is going to just add to our sort of starscape. I, I keep changing what I'm calling a skyscape, starscape, spacescape. Whatever it is, you get the idea. And I don't want to overdo this, but I, I also want it to be quite a fun feature. So perhaps I'll leave it there and we'll move on and just do a few little touches within the Millennium Falcon itself. So when we look at the Millennium Falcon and you look at different references, what do we see? It's mostly greys, but there are some other colours in there. In particular, there's a few little patches of red. So I'm going to actually take my Scarlet Lake and I'm going to dull it down a little bit with a bit of indigo. So we should end up with a kind of dull, well, dull red, really. And now, instead of necessarily having to pick out the exact areas of red, they're quite um, random when you first look at them. So instead of picking out the exact areas, I'm going to just use some of these squares that we, we made already um, and just a few of them can become red and then that will just give the idea that we've got something something there we're not just totally leaving it as negative space and we can change the amount of red so some brighter reds in a few places that's this panel could be brighter red as well we can actually drop in touches of red into some of these dimmer reds and just let it become varied what else have we got? We've got some significant shadows. So perhaps with the shadows, we go back to our lovely indigo. And from our indigo, we just create those shadows. And we can also get an idea of some of these textures just with a few little brush marks. And then remember to just deepen and vary the shadow in a couple of places. 
Similarly here we've got shadow so we can do the same thing and again just come in and soften some of that shadow make it spread and blend and merge and become a bit more varied a bit more alive there's a shadow underneath this as well and then there's some obvious shadows as well where we've when we've done this hatching this is all all shadow so all around here we can just again apply our indigo gently and pull out that shadow and you see because it's just a a line of indigo it's much much flatter it, compared to the the surrounding sky or starscape whatever we're calling it actually it, it pulls the millennium falcon forward so I hope you get the idea that the millennium falcon just from this little shadow on around the outside like a bold line the millennium falcon is is coming forwards and obviously what we can do in the last stage when we get there is we can just neaten up some of these areas so we don't you know, we, we're creating the the loose watercolors at the moment and we can leave it really loose or we can come back and we can tighten it up so do let yourself be loose and don't don't stress about controlling everything too much because we can with watercolors and ink we can come back and just regather a little bit of structure if we need to what else could we add in so there are a few actually a few of these panels are a little a little sort of gray compared to the others so we can just maybe find a few blobs of gray particularly in these inner panels here we could just really create some little shapes again to suggest the kind of um intricacy of what's going on the kind of there's lots of these suggestions that there's wires and things on there around here as well so just this is quite gently going around just finding touches of color and touches of shadow nothing more clever than that now having done that we're going to just come back in and get a little bit more of that feeling of this, this sort of uh, night sky starscape i'm very confused someone give me a, a good idea to call it please in the comments let me know what i should be calling this this background I'm walking into all sorts of uh, confusions for myself doing it. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So just coming around and getting the idea of these little drops can be little stars or planets in the background. It's still wet, so they'll blend, they'll merge, they won't become hard lines. A few dark ones from indigo as well. And again, don't want to overdo it. Maybe a few just simple splashes particularly up here where we've left it negative space and a few red splashes as well just to just fill the uh, Millennium Falcon and combine it with the background as well and all these little touches you can keep making but at some point you need to stop at some point just relax let yourself go and have a coffee or whatever whilst you sort of wait to see what happens so that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to let this guy dry off loads of water so probably a 10 minutes 15 minutes to dry and then let's see what it looks like and see what those um sort of final touches look like as well so we're back and you can see it mostly dried and actually this took a good uh, 15 20 minutes to dry um because of the amount of water and the fluidity but look at the result look at how just fascinating interesting this sort of <laughs> starscape let's call it a starscape look how interesting it is what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to refine some of our structure with all that looseness, with all that fun we've had. Let's just get our Millennium Falcon back in the front of the image. And how do we do that? Well, look, bold lines, bolder lines bring things forward. So let's just start by finding the outline or sort of the silhouette. That's what we're looking for. And as we get the silhouette, hopefully you'll agree that this just comes back into the forefront of our sketch and again look loose line wobbly line doesn't have to be like a neat perfect line but it's just capturing our outline again and then having done that we can find some of the the shape lines the sort of lines that give it 3d-ness so outlining our shadows for example that's a good way to make it feel 3d outlining some of these Kind of areas we've added colour. I'm just adding a bit of 
texture to them and going you know treating it like a continuous line going backwards and forwards along the same line is absolutely fine at least for me it is might not be for you but then you can change your process you can take inspiration from what I do or you can even decide that because I do it you want to do something completely different you don't like this that's fine um just try different things and see what works for you a few extra little lines here maybe a little bit here and we could start just adding in some of these other details some of these kind of textural lines in in the middle as well if we want I'm trying to be really loose I was holding my pen quite firmly just then because I was trying to get a bold line but now's the time to 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 bring back that gentle touch so that we're not overdoing the the, the internal lines this guy this uh sort of satellite dish this can become much bolder as well and some of this hatching we can just redo to like reaffirm the boldness just do some sort of suggestions of little bits and bobs going on in different places as well and there we go so that is probably enough of our extra line work and then we can just do our our very final few little touches with some color and there's there's loads going on already so we don't need i don't think we need very much at all um to add but why don't we just get some of these colors we we're using so we got our moon glow we can cover our, our millennium falcon and we can just splash around it get a bit more of that idea of some stars or distant planets in a kind of the random way that the, the nightscape the the night is a random so we've got that let's get a bit of our peril and violet that's a nice color to touch in as well i think and then a little bit of our indigo which will just be a bit more of a, a muted dark color i don't have to go everywhere you know there's loads going on now so maybe that's enough maybe just some final really dark shadows in here as well just a few areas where we've got our nice sort of outlines now we can uh, we can just sort of do a little bit of paint by numbers painting in between them and i think i'd like to see a little bit more of our our red just on the millennium falcon and maybe just going behind it get that feeling of movement so it's sort of it's come from over here so these reds are also in the distance and finally finally you can actually splash with posca pens very effectively as well a little bit noisier and then um, also it, obviously because it's acrylic when it splashes on your desk it doesn't come off so i've got on my desk which i i well it's my art art desk so it's okay to be uh, covered in these kind of paint marks that's okay for me but if you're using a uh, a desk you want to use for something else in the future just be careful splashing but still have a go if you want just be careful you're not ruining something important and there we go there is my my splashing and we're basically done i'm actually gonna just sign in the white see if that works or is it run out of ink run out of acrylic here we go let's see if i can sign my name in white there's a different touch there we go got my initials down here in white just to, to sort of hopefully stand out in a different way from the background. Now, that's me done. So I'm going to let this dry, obviously, and I'll scan it in, and then you'll be able to see the sort of finished, the finished image. But I'd love to know what you think. This is obviously really loose, but it's it's something very different as well. There's a lot going on. Maybe I've gone overboard with the splashes. Maybe I haven't done enough. Um, let me know your thoughts, what you'd have done differently. And also, given it's Star Wars Day, do have a go at something yourself, just as a, a different challenge. This is not easy for me at all. I'm not used to drawing basically giant dinner plates, or th these aren't shapes which I find very often in my scenes of people or of streets or of buildings. But just by applying the same principles, I'm able to do something which, to be honest, I think has worked quite well. For me, I'm very happy with this. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's, it looks like what it's supposed to look like. It's got shape like what it's supposed to sh sort of have shape like. And yeah, it will uh, certainly be all over my social media today. So I'm happy to share it and I'm happy to share the experience with you as well. Have a, a good Star Wars day if you're, <laughs> if you're celebrating it in any way. Um, and if you're not, just have a go sketching if you feel like it.
So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.